so I'm with Simon. Uh, it's a Monday following the Games Trinity match. Simon, obviously, another great performance, but another disappointing result. Yeah, and we were saying, made it quite clear to the players after that it's the bottom line that uh, we're all judged on. And uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the last four league results and, and the FA Cup uh, results have, have gone against us. And we can say what we like about playing. Mm very good constructive football, passing moves and creating chances, there are positives to take but ultimately you know, we're judged on results and they need to be better. How challenging is this for you now because obviously it's not been the first time when obviously you know we, we've battered teams on the park like you say Colwyn, Bay, I mean actually you saw the stats when it's like 18 shots to two. Mm -hmm. We've done it against games, but I mean, by your own admission, Histon, you thought we were poor. But the other games, we sort of we've taken teams apart, but we've not been able to finish it. How challenging is that now for you to try and overcome that with the team? Yeah, it's one of probably one of our biggest challenges uh, because it, it's breaking the spell. You know, we've got to think it's psychological, without a doubt. Um, I think it would be a mistake to dramatically change the entire squad, to dramatically change the tactics. It would be an error. Because if you change into something else and players aren't familiar with that, they might not create as many chances. So we're trying to stay logical and rational about it, but we have to demand that players um, hit the target when they should. We have to demand that players don't take the extra touch uh, when they can just finish off easy chances, and we have to demand that players keep uh, cropping up in the um, in the right areas. Uh, it's when they don't shoot. It's when they don't shoot. It's when they don't keep asking the question of the opposition. Uh, that's when we'll have a real problem. Now, after the games we match, we saw the quote that you left on the website, and obviously we heard you speaking to Radio York, and you seem to be quite fiery and quite adamant that you know the book now stops. It's going to change. You know, you're going to drill it into the players. They've got to do things better, or they're out. I mean, is that something that's obviously you've you've come to the end of your terror, so to speak? Well, yeah. I mean, it's a, an emotive sport. Uh, you speak straight after uh, after the game. Um, an emotional guy, you know, you want the best for the club, you want the best for, I spoke to fans in the bar, went straight over to them, shook their hand for coming, uh, and said that they, they don't deserve that, um, as I did, you know, last week, I don't think uh, the supporters who are diehards, who get their hands every week, deserve to be on this losing streak, um, and I said to the players, I think they can do more, they can do more now, in terms of uh, showing a ruthless edge, um, because it, it, we've got to arrest this slide and quickly. Um, but I thought the heads dropped when we, I thought we had a 15, 20 minute spell where we were poor on Saturday. And before that, yeah, we should have been 3 up. But that's life, it doesn't always materialise that. And it's how you react. And I, I thought a few of the lads' heads dropped and I thought we became sloppy in possession. And um, that uh, encouraged the opposition. Uh, they get up a, a bit of a head of steam. And, um, and they got 2-0 up before the break. And so I was an angry man then and after the final whistle, uh, because I don't think we were positive enough in the attacking areas. You seem to show um, quite a statement of intent in some respects. I mean, taking off Michael Woods and Craig Nelthorpe and being on Adam and... Ashley. Ashley, thank you. Um, to alter the attacking shape. I mean, was... How angry were you in that dressing room at half time? Was it a case of was it the Ferguson treatment or was it? Oh yeah, I can do that. I can give the hair dry treatment, no problem about that. Um, I want this. I want this to work. I have high expectations of myself, of my staff, and the players. Um, and we've got good quality players. And from the outside looking in, they could think, well, what's going off there? You know, is the organisation poor? Is the tactics poor? Is my management uh, uh, skills poor? And um, you're there to be analysed, and you're there to be shot at, and you know, and that's fair enough. Uh, but I feel that the loyalty that we give the players um, has to be repaid on the park, and to a large extent, it it, it is being it, it, that that has manifested itself. Um, you look at the FA Cup game, where we we have had a team like you said, but we didn't score. And yet, the other day, though. I thought the performance wasn't as good. You've got to maintain the level of performance and not get your head down and you've got to be mentally strong because clubs and players go through periods like this and they test your resolve. But it's your character that gets tested above anything and that's the acid test. 
One thing I do want to clear up is something that obviously uh, you spoke to Rob Wilson of BBC Radio York afterwards and it has been leapt on by a few people and misquoted in a few instances. It's about the new striker and I use that obviously in inverted commas. Mm -hmm. um, you did mention obviously you would look into the possibility of getting one but not necessarily go down that route. I mean is there anything you can say to obviously to clarify that? Oh, I, I, I definitely said that we may, we may look at it. Nothing other than that I haven't been looking to add to the squad. But um, that's six hours now, you know, uh, without scoring. And there hasn't been that end product that we, that we all want. And we want the same thing. We want the end product to the chances created. 18 shots at Colwyn Bay, you're expected to hammer t a team having 18 shots and creating the real open chances that we did. The other day, there should have been more goals. There should have been goals, full stop, and nine more goals. Um, and you can, you can look after players and look after players, but eventually, even my patience gets tested, and you go, hang on a second, we may need to change it to break the spell, um, and you don't discount that. Uh, we'll, have a, we'll have a look, and we've got to do what's best for the club. We've got a two-week break now until we face Boston United down at um, their place. Is that a two-week break that you really don't want, or is it a two-week break you think, actually, listen, we're going to deconstruct it now, we're going to rebuild it, and we will go back onto that pitch against Boston United, and we will do the business? Well, we've got to sharpen it up, and there's no doubt about it. Um, we've got some challenging games ahead at Boston, followed by Hensford, two teams in the top five. Um, it doesn't come any easier, but that, that's, that's when it all boils down to that character assessment, what you're about. Are you going to shy away? Are you going to hide away? Or are you going to keep going? Are you going to come to training and be the best uh, player in training? Can you demand from others? Or are you going to go quiet? Um, it, it's going to be a challenge. I didn't want there to be a two-week gap. Some people said well, I might be best, better off you know, having a breather for two weeks. But as I said to the lads, I'll be in that game for changing room for the next few days in my head. And, and assessing it and, and looking at faces and, and thinking, are you with everyone? Are you with, uh, with the club? Um, because I think a few people can forget just how good it is in terms of the atmosphere here. And we're fair people, uh, but we do demand, you know, and I'm not afraid to make changes at half time, like you mentioned before. Um, I'm not made, uh, afraid to make changes uh, in the squad or in the team um, because it all boils down to how do we get results? How do we get better? How do we climb the table? And um, I'm bothered about the bottom line. Now you mentioned this before, and it's something that obviously we've mentioned many a times as well, and we put it on the website as well, um, that you are always, you're the kind of manager that will meet the fans afterwards. You will go and you will talk to them and you will be open and honest. Do you think at the moment that possibly has backfired with, you know, with all the th things that have happened recently, you know, criticism that you've come under for sort of team selection and the fact that the team isn't scoring? You know, we've seen what happened to Paul Odie and Bogey when he came in with Stockport. I mean, he got some horrendous abuse off the fans. Is that something that you're going to keep on doing? Um, I, I think when I know people are honest, then I can be honest to them, you know, and uh, I'll confront anyone who, who's 100% uh, who's behind the club and say, yeah, I'll talk it through, and hopefully um, the talk at the bar, you know, people can understand that I'm not illogical and, uh, and I probably... Well, hopefully talk sense to the guy, you know, or to whoever would like to ask me a question. Uh, I bumped into a few games where I went straight over to him and I said, apologies about that, you know, we're better than that. We should have been in the lead early on, but then we had a, an atrocious spell and we let the club down. Um, I'm not hiding away from you, I'm not, not going to go into a bar, I'll just say, say it as it is. Um, if it's an irrational statement back, then I'll say, well, if that's your opinion, you're entitled to that. I don't think it's backfired at all because I think the more people get to know people in person then the less inclined they are to disregard comments. Um, yeah, Ian Bogey had a rough time of it, he did, I uh, felt for the guy um, and he didn't want that anymore. I'm 35, I think I've probably got more to learn than some managers because of that age and inexperience, uh, but I've got the appetite, I've got the appetite and uh, I won't be put down, you know, and um, it's a game that's wonderful because, because of the amount of opinions that get thrown out there and everyone's entitled to them and I don't see why anyone should put anyone down for having an opinion even if it's against me you know even if it's not constructive that's that's entirely people's opinion I don't agree with Roy Hodgson sometimes <laughs> but uh, and I'm sure he'd just go 
doesn't matter. Um, but no, I think uh, last week was healthy. The fans forum, um, uh, the open fans forum was good. Um, I'm never one really to read comments about the team or, or myself because I, I, I think that's for fans to you know get on with and, and enjoy that. That's okay. In terms of talking though to people, I'm, I think we should do more of the open fans forums. And I, th I made a point of wanting it last week because we're on a rough spell, uh, so people can say, look, you know, at least to realise that we're not going to, back, uh, you know, shy away from answering questions. You've got to be upfront and honest, and and hopefully we um, we were, you know, we we're honest enough for people last week, and they enjoyed the evening. It's almost like you've read my question script because going onto the fans forum yeah. now, <laughs> going onto the fans forum now. Putting aside, obviously, what was said, how did you feel personally after it? You know, what was your initial reaction? What was your thoughts? Uh, good. Uh, um, I travelled back actually uh, with my dad, and um, and we were pleased the way it went because we were able to look people in the eyes and you know and just explain the course of events from things off the field and and on it. You know what my thoughts were, um, but football quickly changes, doesn't it? You know, and the questions about centre forwards were asked and. Um, and we backed centre forwards this weekend, and it didn't quite happen again. And uh, and we'll still back them, but maybe we need bulking up now. But in terms of the whole evening, I thought it was it was good. It was good, and I don't think um, anyone could say we shied away from anything or any question, which was uh, uh, maybe in doubt in some people's minds. I mean, the one good thing was there's a lot of very questions at the fans forum, and like you say, you know, there was. The chance of the fans to express themselves totally open and honestly, and you know you you did answer, and we had obviously had John Gray and Gary Plant um, chipped in. Was there anything that you sort of thought afterwards? Oh, I would have loved to have said that. I should have mentioned that. You know, is there anything now that you sort of like to put on the record, so to speak, and sort of say, I wish I'd also been able to say this. Um, I, I think team spirit can can be uh, um, swept to one side, and and the organisation, the training structures. You know, maybe. It would be uh, be nice to. I did have the platform to say, but for people to maybe ask about about that really, um, about what is it exactly we do in, in terms of the team shape, and, and maybe find out tactically, uh, so it's not just written on the back of a cigarette paper. You know, the team, and you pick your best eleven, and that's it. Go out and play. Um, you know, we go into a lot of analysis. We're going to work on the shape a lot, um, and we're organised. And I know. One player the other night after the game said, "Look, I've come here. I've left a club to come here because it is more organised tactically, um, and the preparation works spot on." Um, but yeah, I mean, I can talk football all night, so I would have carried on. I think we were there for two hours, but I, I, I'm more than happy to answer questions and talk football because I love the game. Brilliant. I'm really going to have to hide my question sheet for you because this goes on to the next one I was going to ask about the fact that we have really stepped up a gear, you know, you have the video now, I know you have the matches um, burnt for you straight away, and you're there literally two hours, three hours after the match watching the video again, picking out areas, we have Johnny Lally who's doing a fantastic job on the stats for you, and uh, for the fans that obviously don't know this, Johnny provides such in detail stats for Simon, it's mm -hmm. unbelievable, I and mean, we no, we're practically talking premiership level with a lot of the stuff that he does provide. Um, you've got people like John Gray, Phil Lee, who are obviously providing the psychological and the sports side of it. I mean, the club for a Conference North League club is amazingly set up for that kind of thing. And do you find that thing really does help? Because I know that some managers will sort of go, oh, videos, don't need them. Well, it, it helps me because I'm having a holistic view of the event. Um, and there's no stone unturned, and you, you, you look in depth at everything. And, uh, but maybe there's been too much. To some players, maybe there's been too much, and we have to just go. I know. Let's go back to basics and let me digest the information. Um, you can analyse too much as well, and I think players are overthinking in, in the six-yard box instead of acting on instinct, and they've just got to wipe the slate clean in their head. So maybe, yeah, it's as professional as you're going to get for me at this level, uh, or indeed a few levels above. Um, but players. <laughs> I have to have simple aims during games and we'll keep it that way. I don't think we confuse matters, uh, but we'll have to make sure that the message is simple and, and we get better and better uh, because we can have all this infrastructure and we're building it up to a very high level in my opinion and every, every session's planned down, uh, completed uh, and, and then reflected upon. Um, but, uh, 
but we need the end result because everything gets analysed and picked to pieces and right so when you when you lose and we're not getting good enough results one of the things is putting aside obviously the playing side of it and you know what happens on the pitch are other clubs sort of noticing Harrogate Town now as a more professional outfit you know what the chairman and the managers coming to say to you after the match well funny enough recently that managers have have uh, been on the phone saying they're one of, that we're one of the best teams that played this season, but it really doesn't comfort me in the slightest that um, yeah, everyone's commented, even the pro clubs have played on in the summer, the standard of the pitch. You know, Paul Heckingbottom used to play for me, uh, who's at Barnsley now, doing a great, great job there. He, um, he said, What a setup now! Brilliant. And he gives it a great platform in order to bring players in uh, because people, the opposition, come here and they go, Wow, you know, it's, it's been turned around. Um, which makes, which can actually build up the anxiety a little bit more in players' minds that, you know, it's a it's a club on the up. We've got to deliver. Uh, but it's up to me, Phil, John, uh, and Maka to to really relieve the players of that pressure, you know, so they can just go go and play instead of being hung up that, oh yeah, it's so good, it's all set up for the conference at and higher levels. We've got to deliver. Um, they have to be relieved of that pressure, but know that the the bottom line is, is what we're all judged on. I want to actually come now um, to you and John McDermott. Now, when you first came, there was um, Kevin Sharp, Tom Wade. You seem to have really, really formed a bond with Macca. Uh, I mean, what's so special between you two? Well, you know, what does John bring to the table that the other guys possibly didn't? His tactical awareness uh, and now is second to none. He's got a great manner with players. Um, we got him very well indeed. Um, he never says no on the, you know on, on the phone in terms of right not now. Uh, he's got four kids, you know, and it's he cares. He cares as much as me, and I think that's the biggest quality that anyone can have. And that passion and drive and the, the care to put it right. He has sleepless nights when we lose, um, and we both worry it through. And I think we've got similar traits. And. Uh, he doesn't say no to watching a game or uh, to analysing a game or a player, and he places the importance of someone as a as a guy. You know, if they got the same drive as much as I do, um, he knows a player. He knows a player, and he knows how much it means to me, and he knows me as a person, which you, which I think is important. I think it's important that you you can place your trust in your number two, and and I can certainly do that. Now, obviously, the big question being is, have you read the book? No chance. No. <laughs> um, I've read the end section, see if I've got any good good mentions. Uh, but they were few and far between. No, they were, no it, was, it, was, it was an excellent... Uh, I've, I've read the majority. I'm a slow reader, because I'm always flipping back to Harrogate Town and, and making pointers on my iPad in bed. But, um, no, it's a, it's a good read, and um, it, it's done very well for him as well. And It's a good insight into a professional footballer, and... He was one of the best. Has he inspired you to write your own yet? Uh, not the minute. <laughs> not the minute. I want to. Uh, I want to, the last chapter to be a, um, a very good one. Uh, I'm sure it will be as well. Going away from Harrogate Town's main team, um, the one thing that we've really progressed on this season is the development squads in the academy. I mean, we've got the under 17s, the under 19s, the under 21s, and the academy. And at the moment, all are flying. You know, the, the, yeah, the results sure. are fantastic. I mean, 21 nil. In the cup for uh, the under 19s, I think it was, and then uh, beating FC Halifax here mm. for the academy side. As the manager overlooking sort of like the main team, but obviously keeping an eye on how the guys are developing, I mean, what does that mean to you? I am so proud that uh, it's building up from, from a point where there was nothing uh, below the first team um, to where we are now with the infrastructure behind that. Um, we've come on leaps and bounds. And it's because of the people involved. Um, so like John McDermott there, uh, Gary Plant, Mike Bly. Uh, these people are, are adamant that we're going to have a, a youth structure and they're going to provide young players for me to pick in future years. And we've got a few lads in the academy team who uh, I thought they were excellent as a group. And a, a few players that you know really, really were outstanding on the night. And um, Yeah, they, they've got a great work ethic. And they've got qualities in there that you can see now in the second year of their what was apprenticeship and now is the scholarship. Uh, they're coming into their own and they're growing physically and they're coping with the demands of 
day-to-day -day training. And so, yeah, you can see with athletics and the youth, the, the exuberance of that, um, that they're certainly going to give me a, a problem, a selection problem in, in the days ahead and, and years ahead. I'm going behind the ethos of this. I mean, a lot of people probably say, oh, well, you know, your conference north level, you don't need an academy. But when you look at sort of teams at high level, a lot of you know a lot of clubs do. How important was it for Harrogate Town? Like you said, we had to play catch up. But how important was it for Harrogate Town to actually get on that ball, get it rolling, yeah, and get the academy going? It's essential. You know, we we need we needed this club to um, to provide something for for young players of the local area. Whereas we didn't have that. It came to a grinding halt at the local leagues, and it, it still does. Uh, from about 16, 17, but there's obviously a lot of talented sportsmen in Harrogate, um, not just in football, uh, but we needed this club to be uh, the platform for them. And yeah, there's some players coming through. Uh, we need to keep pushing them. We need to make sure that they've got the right habits, and we may, need, need to make sure that they're street wise enough to cope with the demands of first team football, uh, so that there's not suddenly a, a cut off and, and then they're out the door. You know whether that's after the academy level, they're still with us, they train with us, and the what the uh, the best of them, uh, the cream of them, um, rises up and plays for the first team, and um, whether some develop a little bit later, uh, but are still under our umbrella, but go like the likes of Alex Metcalf um, and Sam Jones go out on loan uh, and keep being educated and keep toughening up, so that when they get the chance, uh, they have real loyalty to the club because we've we've. Um, Help them along the way. Now I know um, from conversations with you before, and I've seen you on the phone practically nearly every single minute of the day. I mean, for the fans, I've actually literally had to confiscate Simon's phone for this interview because it's always going off. Um, but Simon is the kind of manager that will go to these matches. He'll go to the academy matches. He'll go to all the development team matches. How important do you think that is as a manager that you actually are there? You know, you're supporting the team, but you're also looking at them as well. Well, it's important, and I, I'm disappointed that I can't get to all of them, but uh, I, I think that it, it's important that people look round and think, oh yeah, he's, you know, I went down to Doncaster to watch the game uh, for the under-17s and they did very well. Um, it's important that they realise that it's not just a, you know, an act, you know, that oh yeah, we care, um, uh, but do we really? Do we really? And uh, it's important that, you know, I, I get in the car and, and show these lads that you know, there's an there's an aim there, there's a goal there, and you can achieve it if your attitude's right and you keep progressing. Mostly, they have to have the ability. You know, they have to have that ability, but the importance is the drive behind it to achieve that ability. Um, this comes naturally to some of them. Uh, are they taken into account? What Phil Lee can provide, John Gray can provide, John McDermott. Um, they've got my email, email address. You know. I'll always try and respond to our players and our youngsters, and I've had one already. You know, saying, you know, uh, have you had a look at me? What what feedback uh, can I have? And I love that because it's proactive, and people want to grow and learn. And uh, and it's the same as me as a manager, really. And I've got to set that example. I've got to speak to senior managers who've been in the game 15, 20, 25, 30 years more than me. I've got to learn, um, and the only way of doing that is answering the questions uh, for people who are in the know. Uh, and not take it as a slight that you know I make a mistake occasionally, and um, it's all all about us all improving, and it's about doing it fast so that we can appease the fans and appease ourselves. So, just a pop question then: Who is the most famous person in your phone book contact at the moment? Um, whew. Um, it must be between Gary Plant and. Um, <laughs> Uh, probably the Blackburn manager because he was a youth team manager there and he was, he was a pal and he's got the job there now so in, in the structure of football yeah. probably in the management position here yeah, Gary Bowie Brilliant and then are you expecting any phone calls from Roy Hodgkinson? Um, uh, no not, I haven't got his, uh, his phone number but I'll be on it and say he's playing the wrong system no I'm kidding <laughs> Coming back to how we get Town's first team um, what is the message now? What is the message that you're going to give to the players to take on, you know, on board now for the, the, the Boston match and to progress us throughout the season? What is the main overriding message that Simon Weaver, the manager, will give the players in that dressing room? Well, I think we've said, or we've got to say in the changing room, it's now doing it. And words can take you so far. They can take me so far the other night. It's about acting it out. 
And it's about being forceful, being purposeful, uh, shooting on site, getting in areas, still doing the build-up play, but with more, being more dynamic doing it. Um, but going and getting the results for the fans, getting the results for ourselves, uh, so we have a better feeling, better self-esteem, and get the show on the road. Uh, because we don't want to be playing catch up for too long now. You know, we we've got to hit the ground running against Boston, do it against Hensford, and get some momentum going. A lot of people sort of commented that possibly the Boston uh, Hensford match are the 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 awful phrase the six pointer. Uh, games is that something that you would agree with? Are you saying you know listen, it's far too soon to be thinking like that? You know we just need to. Well, they're tough games. They're tough games, and if if you build them up as you have to win it, then you only heighten the anxiety in the eighteen yard box. You know, I think I think you've got to man manage it a little bit better than that and say right, you know, of course we want that win, of course we want it, but when we've been on runs before, winning runs before. It's because people have acted instinctively and have been happy in themselves uh, and have freed themselves up to score. Um, it's not life or death, it's near it <laughs> for me. But uh, in, terms of, um, in terms of managing them, I want them to be able to know how important it is, know how to do it, know what the aim of the game is and the style of play we play and then just go and carry it, carry it out and let people assess where we need to be and you know in terms of how valuable the three points are but concentrate on our performance and things will happen now the final thing I want to touch on is something in some respects that's actually quite new to the club is that um, we formed really strong links with Harrogate Railway I mean I know you're great friends with obviously their manager Billy Miller and I know um, he spends a, a fair bit of time up here you know speaking to you and Discussing things, like you say, Sam Jones is on loan down there. They've yeah. got Robbie Uhill, um, Alex Metcalf. They've had Peter Crook. Yeah. Um, history gone by. Obviously, the two teams have been seen as the rivals to one another. But you've made very proactive steps, and you, you, you know, you, you've gone ahead and you've changed that completely. So much so that the clubs now are actually very friendly, very good terms with one another. You know, they act as a feeder club and stuff like yeah. that. Again, how important was it for you to do that, and how did that actually come around? It's essential, you know. We want that uh, go between between the two clubs. Um, Billy's a top man, you know. He, he he loves his players, loves the game, and he plays the way he wants his team to play the way uh, that I want mine. You know, on the deck, with passion, uh, with end product, um, and he's got a hard job there, you know. And I want him to be to be able to ask me for a favour for a player and. If I think it's going to help Harrogate Town by playing for him to have Paul Beasley knocking goals in for him rather than uh, having a spell on the bench, then it makes sense. And it's a win-win situation for us both. Um, Sam Jones's form has, has gone from strength to strength, playing games there, and again better through playing 90 minutes. Um, Peter, great education for him playing uh, playing games on a Saturday, and I thought he did well on Saturday um, for us, and he'll only improve by playing Saturday afternoon football at a good level with Billy Miller. Now, to finish, um, I want to give you the opportunity, Simon, to obviously address the fans of Harrogate Town. I mean, we've had the fans for them, we've had the question and answers, um, and for the fans that obviously weren't there, it's sometimes difficult to obviously read mm -hmm. things on the written word. I mean, yeah, yeah. It, you know, it's hard emotionally, as you well know. So, to give you the chance now, Simon, what would you actually like to say to the camera, obviously addressing the Harrogate Town fans, um, you know, what, what, what's your form, you go for it, what would you like to say to them? Well, we, we are doing, we're doing everything possible to improve um, as a club, as a team, and we want to win every game that we, uh, that we play, and we'll set out to win every game, and we're ambitious, and we're hungry, um, and it's been an awful weekend, and we're on a bad run, um, but I guarantee every effort, every commitment, and it's a heart and soul job, you know, we want it. We want it more than anything, uh, to put it right and to put smiles on people's faces. Uh, but it's grit and determination and togetherness. Um, and better finishing, we'll admit that, that we'll put, we'll put the show on the road and put the club on the map again. Simon, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you and thank you for taking time out of your schedule. Thank you.